Today in video notes we're going to talk about something called the sum of the forces. Let's first go back to the first activity we did in this unit where we navigated a bowling ball through an obstacle course and we reached some conclusions after the end of that. We said that if you push on the bowling ball it will do one of three things. It will either speed up, it will slow down, or it will change direction. If you push on it in the same direction it's moving it will speed up. If you push on it in the opposite direction that it's moving, it will slow down. And if you push perpendicularly to the direction of motion, the ball will either curve to the left or curve to the right. All those can be summed up as saying the object will change its velocity or accelerate. We said that when the bowling ball is moving uh, and we weren't pushing on it, or there was no force applied by the broom, we said that the bowling ball moved with an approximate constant velocity, which means it met, moved in the, with the same speed without slowing down or speeding up significantly, and it moved in a straight line in the same direction. Now we need to kind of go back and revise these conclusions, because even when we weren't pushing on it, that doesn't mean the ball wasn't feeling a push or a pull. So let's look at the situation where we weren't touching the bowling ball and it was moving along at a relative constant velocity. Make sure you guys go back to your guided notes and uh, fill this out as we discuss these next three examples. So let's look at the bowling ball, like I said, when it's moving at a constant velocity along the floor. Now, even though we weren't pushing or pulling on it, we know at least that the bowling ball was feeling a force from, of gravity because it has mass. So we can draw a force going down and label it the force of gravity on the bowling ball by the Earth. And because it's resting on the floor, and the floor is flexing a little bit, we know the floor has to be pushing back up on the bowling ball with a normal force. So we label that force the force normal on the bowling ball by the floor. So I'm going to introduce now a new concept which we're going to call the sum of the forces. And we represent that with uh, a Greek symbol called sigma. So sigma F means the sum of the forces. Other textbooks or physics teachers also call this the net force. Basically the sum of the forces is what you have left over after you add up all the forces on an object. So let's look at in this situation what the sum of the forces would be. Well, whenever we measure force in the metric system uh, we have to use a different unit other than pounds. We're used to measuring forces in pounds but in the metric system we use a, a unit of force called the Newton and this is the conversion factor. One pound is equal to about 4.45 newtons, which means a newton is about a quarter of a pound. So if we have a 10 pound bowling ball, that makes the force of gravity on this uh, about 44.5 or 44 newtons. The reason we say that the force of gravity is negative 44 newtons because the gravity is pointed down and down by definition is the negative direction. Since we know that the normal force is the same size as the force of gravity, just in the opposite direction, we'd say that the normal force is positive 44 newtons. And if we add up those forces in the x direction and the y direction, we'll see what we get. So sigma fx means the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction. Well, there are no horizontal forces, so the, the sum or the addition of nothing and nothing is just nothing. So the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero newtons. Well, let's look in the y direction, Well, which is the vertical direction. We have one force down, which is negative 44 newtons, plus one force up, that's positive 44 newtons. And if we add up those two forces, we get negative 44 plus positive 44. Again, we get the fact that the sum of the forces is zero. So it's not that there are no pushes or pulls felt by the bowling ball, which causes it to move at a constant velocity. It's that all the forces that the bowling ball feels, when added up, equals zero. Let's look at the situation where the bowling ball, let's say, is moving to the right and it's speeding up. So let's say the broom is pushing with a 10 newton force to the right, and we know that if the ball is moving to the right and it's feeling a force to the right, it's got to be speeding up. So the force diagram looks like this. We've got that uh, F sub P that stands for a force of push on the bowling ball by the broom, which would be 10 newtons to the right. 
we know the bowling ball feels that force of gravity down. So we've got the force of gravity in the ball by the Earth. And we know the floor is pushing up with a normal force. The force normal on the ball by the floor. Remember, the force of gravity is negative 44 newtons. We know the normal force is positive 44 newtons. And we said that this pushing force was positive 10 newtons because it's pushing to the right. And in our horizontal convention, right is positive and left is negative. So if we look at the sum of the forces on the bowling ball now in both directions, we see that in the y direction, the sum of the forces vertically, or the y direction, is still zero because it's positive 44 plus negative 44. But now we have one force to the right, and so when we add up the forces, in this case there's just one force, the sum is equal to 10 newtons. So we can see that the sum of the forces is point, has some value pointing to the right, and we can see that it has an acceleration to the right. Now let's look at a situ the situation where uh, the bowling ball would be slowing down. Let's say the bowling ball is moving to the right and it's slowing down. The way that we do that is by pushing on it with the broom back to the left. And let's just again say that you're pushing with a 10 newton size force. Well, the bowling ball is moving to the right and slowing down. There's our push back to the left. So this would be the force of push on the bowling ball by the broom. We have the force of gravity on the bowling ball by the earth. That's that pull of gravity down because the ball has mass. Because it's resting on the floor, we also know that, like we talked about in the previous two examples, there's a normal force on the ball by the floor pushing up. When we look at the sum of the forces separately in the horizontal direction and separately in the vertical direction, we can see that vertically, again, the sum of the forces is zero, and horizontally, we have a negative 10 newton sum because our push is to the left, and so it's, by definition, a negative force. So now we can see that the push is to the left, so therefore it's going to accelerate to the left. It's moving positively, it has a negative acceleration. So now, after looking at these three situations, we kind of, here's our new conclusions that we can reach about force and motion. Like the bowling ball moving in the no-touch zone, where it's moving at a constant velocity, uh, it's not that no pushes or pulls equals causes something to move at a constant velocity. Uh, we can just say that if the sum of the forces is zero, which means if there's no pushes, the sum would be zero. Or if there's two pushes, the same size in opposite directions, they're going to cancel one another out, and the sum would be zero. Or you could have an object that feels four forces. One up, one down, same size, opposite direction. One to the left, one to the right same size and opposite direction. And all of these situations shows an object that feel that has the sum of the forces equal to zero. If this is true of the forces on an object, then it will move with a constant velocity, which means it keeps the same speed and will continue to move in the same direction. Just like in math class, whenever you have two arrows that we want to show are the same size, we can use little slashes to show which ones are the same size. So here, the top one and the bottom one are the same size. And two other slashes to show that the left one and the right one are also the same size. We can also say that uh, when there's a push or the sum of the forces is not equal to zero, then something will speed up or slow down or change direction. Our previous conclusion was if an object feels a force in the same direction of motion, it's going to speed up. Well, we can now change that to say if the sum of the forces on an object, if we add everything up and there's force left over to the right or in the same direction it's moving, it's going to speed up. Or for something to slow down, either a force has to be pushing against it in the direction of motion or when you add up all the forces on the object, those force, the sum of the forces has to be pointed in the opposite direction it's moving. Same thing with the change of direction except we can just say that if the sum of the forces are, if all the forces are added up or the sum of the forces points in a direction that's perpendicular to the object's direction of motion, then it has to just change direction. Okay,
Today you guys are going to work on a homework assignment called worksheet number two where you're given several different situations of an object moving at a constant velocity or speeding up or slowing down or at rest and you need to draw the force diagram for that object. What forces, what pushes or pulls does the object feel and what's the value and direction of the sum of the forces on the object just like we did in the last three examples with the bowling ball. So why don't you turn over to number three on worksheet number two and we'll do this together. The situation involves a baseball player slowing down while diving into the base so he's sliding on the ground. Well you can see that the baseball player is moving to the left and slowing down so there must be some force to the right causing him to slow down. Since he's sliding on the ground when two objects or surfaces slide we know that friction is present. So we have a force moving to the right Call that the force of friction on the man by the ground. We always know that there's the force of gravity pulling something down, so we have the force of gravity on the man by the earth, and since he's on the ground and the ground is supporting him, and the ground is being flexed a little bit, even at the microscopic level, there's a normal force pushing up on the man by the ground. So M equals man, G stands for ground, E stands for earth. Now let's look at what the sum of the forces would be on the man while he's moving. We don't have specific values for the forces, but since we know that the guy is moving to the left and slowing down, when we add up all the forces, there can only be something left over to the right. So vertically, the downward force and the upward force, we know have to cancel one another, so the sum, the sum of the forces in the y direction would be zero. And we know there's only one force horizontally, which is pointed to the right, so the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be positive, it has to be pointed to the right. Now let's look at number seven, where a skydiver, which is attached to a parachute, descends at a constant speed. When a parachute is deployed and a parachutist is basically falling downward, um, there's enough air resistance on the parachute to keep the person from continuing to speed up and so the parachutist will descend at a constant velocity. So, again, every force diagram you draw, you always have to have a gravitational force. So let's just start with that. We've got the force of gravity on the parachutist by the Earth. And since this parachutist is moving at a constant velocity, that means if the velocity is constant, the sum of the forces has to be zero, which means there has to be a force pushing or pulling up on this person that's the same size as the force of gravity but in the opposite direction so that the sum of the forces is zero. That we'll call a frictional force. So there's a frictional force on the person by the air and we're just going to, the force is actually on the parachute but we'll just assume that the person and the parachute are all one object. We know they have to be the same size so you could even put a little slash through each to show that those forces are indeed the same size. Here's our subscript notation. P stands for person, A stands for air, and E stands for earth. When we add up the forces in the horizontal and the vertical direction, this is what we get. The sum of the forces in the x direction, which is the horizontal direction, is zero because there's no forces. So the sum of nothing and nothing is still nothing. In the vertical or y direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction also have to be zero. And we know that because the parachutist is moving at a constant velocity.